Welcome to the CADFEM ANSYS tutorials. In this presentation we'd like to show you how to use Workbench to calculate induced vibrations. With this in mind we're going to look at a robot being subjected to a rotational force or an imbalance at its front end such that a harmonic vibration is induced by for example a welding gun. The harmonic analysis involves definition of the damping and this then leads to a frequency response which enables us to see how high above the frequency the amplitudes are. The starting point for our harmonic analysis will be a modal analysis. Modal analysis of our robot shows us a list of all the natural frequencies. In this case it goes from 24 up to 900 Hz and it also reveals the corresponding vibration modes in the form of images or animations. What is not revealed by modal analysis is the amplitudes, the extent of this vibration, as we're not inducing this vibration using a defined force. Let's calculate that now using a harmonic analysis, a harmonic stimulus, by means of this rotational imbalance, this rotational force, by dropping the harmonic analysis onto the modal analysis by a drag and drop. Then we get a second framework, and also a second branch in our analysis called harmonic analysis, and we can set the range of frequencies that we would like to observe within this harmonic analysis. For the modal analysis, we've decided on a definition of between 0 and 900 Hz. So we enter this. Then we determine how we want to perform the calculation, specifying 20 points between the individual frequencies which are to be bundled. And then we define the form our stimulus is to take. On the one hand, our stimulus consists of a force of 100 newtons here at the front, acting in the direction of the y-axis which constitutes the initial force. You can see the force vector in the form of an arrow. And taking the same surface, we duplicate the force in the direction of the z-axis, offset at 90 degrees. And to make it a rotary force, we enter a phase angle of 90 degrees. With these two forces in place, we're in a position to be able to define this rotary force. So this is how we describe the unbalance. We use the analysis configuration to define the damping. There are various types of damping, various models of damping. There's a damping factor, a damping ratio of 1%, i.e. 0.01. And then finally I determine which calculation I would like to perform, namely the frequency response for the displacement of this surface. So I select the surface and select deformation, and then also the direction, in this case for example the y-axis. I then start the analysis. That may last a few moments. And once the analysis is complete, we get a graphic illustration of the frequency response and an analysis of the frequency response. We can zoom into interesting areas, and we can see that, for example, the high amplitudes tend to occur at low frequencies. We can see that the first natural frequency is not induced particularly strongly at all, but the second, and also the fourth, certainly are. This means that on the one hand, not only can I see which natural frequencies are critical, but I can also see how critical they are, in that I can also pay regard to the amplitude, as the value given here represents the displacement in millimetres at the predetermined point, due to a stimulus being brought into the system, and also the damping that occurs as a result of the damping ratio. With regard to natural frequencies, it is, for example, the second that is particularly critical, and this is exemplified by the second natural frequency which we see here, as a mode of vibration. This vibration mode looks like this. The harmonic analysis also enables us to use this natural frequency to obtain the amplitude, in terms of a complete 3D illustration. We therefore include a deformation, and stipulate that we want to make this selection based on the mode, on the natural frequency 
To be more precise, this relates to mode number 2, the second frequency, and we can then instigate the calculation. The same goes for the stress. We select stress, and we specify that we want to use the results, and indeed mode number 2, as the source of our definition. And then we can activate the calculation.